Hey folks, today I want to talk about boosting. And this is a question I get a lot on stream. And I guess you can understand why coming from World of Warcraft and moving into Final Fantasy, a lot of people basically have been asking me like, hey, I've seen your journey and transition. Should I actually boost and, you know, kind of join you folks in the Eorzea? Yeah? Or should I do the, you know, MSQs and go through A Realm Reborn all the way to Shadowbringers? Um, so I personally did the A Realm Reborn all the way to Shadowbringers, I think roughly in 70 plus days. And my personal opinion is that if you have the time, take the time, do a Realm Reborn all the way to Shadowbringers because quite honestly, until this day, even after I've tried Savage Raids and the EX Trials and even like certain professions like fishing, I still think like the MSQ was like the best part about playing this game. And every day I cry about the idea that I can't wipe my memory and go back and experience the MSQs again. And every day I look at the calendar and I go like, when is Endwalker MSQ is going to be released? So that's my first piece of advice. Because understanding the law would actually make you appreciate a lot of the things that you do in the end game. For example, when you meet certain NPCs in raids, you understand their backstory, you understand the significance of them being in the raid. And you know, those emotional connections that you forge, they will amplify your enjoyment when you get to the very end game and you're doing side content and you see familiar faces, you understand why they are there and the purpose they serve. And I think that's very important context to, you know, kind of enjoy the game as a whole. But with that said, I actually think that it's completely fine to actually boost the character if you have, you know, no patience for actually leveling through everything from A Realm Reborn to, you know, Shadowbringers. And there's a few caveats here, but let me get to the end of it. Uh, so hold on to your pitchforks. I know some people are busting out the pitchforks already. The reality of Final Fantasy and other MMOs is that at the end of the day, it's the player base that holds the community together. The glue that basically holds the game together is really a social glue. And what keeps you coming back for more is all these enjoyable experiences that you have with your friends or your static or your FC, the game itself. So I can totally see the perspective of someone coming in from let's say World of Warcraft and say all my friends are doing all these wonderful things and they're enjoying themselves in the end game. And you know, I kind of find it daunting to go through the MSQs, eventually join them in the end game. And so that's usually like I think the first rationale why people boost. They just want to start hanging out and doing stuff with their friends. And I think that is completely okay. However, there's a few caveats though, and I think these needs to be met in order for them to really enjoy Final Fantasy XIV in a sustainable fashion. First of which, I think they need to understand their role and their job to a satisfactory degree. And this is overwhelming, I think, for new MMORPG players especially, or maybe even other players transiting from other games into Final Fantasy XIV. When they look at boosting a character and you get to level 70 instantly, and then obviously you need to finish off the 10 levels in Shadowbringers uh, manually. But the moment you boost, you look at your skill and your traits, and it might be overwhelming because there's so many abilities that you, know, you have no idea what they do. But when you're leveling, they actually handhold you through you know, all these abilities. You go to your job trainer and you do you know, X, Y, and Z and they give you a new ability and slowly you integrate that new ability into your rotation and you understand the purpose of each you know, spell and trait. And it's kind of easier to piece things together rather than, hey, here's everything, go and figure it out which one is more important in, in your rotational priorities. But hey, we also live in an age where you know the internet is actually a thing and there are so many guides out there on how to do your rotation properly for various job and classes and it's even broken down into different like levels like level 70, level 80 and there's more than enough resources for you to kind of figure out okay, if I boost, this is how I do my optimal rotation, this is what this spell is for, this is what this ability is for. So I think the first step is really for them to go and you know put in the groundwork and understand how their job work and that is important because I think as you go into endgame content, the last thing you want to do is you go into an encounter and you're simply frustrated because you have no idea what you need to do. Uh, cough, cough, a certain streamer, famous person who has now really become more of a meme in the, in the community simply because, you know, he or she didn't understand the job role and the job scope and what they needed to do in the game. And then they kind of turn around and flipped on the game and say, you know, this game is bad simply because they didn't take the time to really understand what their job is about. So my sense is if you're going to boost, at least take the time to understand the basic fundamentals of what your job actually does. And then with that, you can probably give a fair assessment of the end game. I think a lot of the community pushback on boosting and the negative stuff I hear about boosting is stemming from a place where the community, the larger, broader Final Fantasy XIV community has actually done the MSQs and they know how good it is. And when someone misses out on the experience, I think they feel to a certain degree that, oh man, 
it's such a pity you know that they didn't get all these new joiners and sprouts actually experiencing the best part of the game um, in their opinion and i can totally see that but i think the bigger fear about boosting from the community is really more like um another queen 69 situation where people boost and they just don't get the nuances of the game and then they end up blaming the game and saying the game is not fun but you know the waifus here are 10 upon 10. And if you need an example or anecdote of what I just said, just look at Max's team from World of Warcraft, right? They're World First Raiders in World of Warcraft. They put together a blind progression raiding Final Fantasy static, and they have been having so much fun. You can see their progression on Twitch. I've been tuning into their progress, and they're having so much fun. They didn't go through the MSQs. Well, bulk of them didn't do the MSQs. They boosted. But I think it's fair to say that all of them actually bothered to look up their basic rotations and understand the basic fundamentals. And it's actually pretty exciting to see them do blind progression and they're actually doing really, really well. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to look at their face and understand that they're actually having fun in all these wipes. So again, the difference maker that they did is that they actually took the time to understand the fundamentals of their job. Not surprising though, obviously, they're World First Raiders in World of Warcraft, so they understand the importance of understanding your, your job toolkit, essentially. So that's the first main point I kind of wanted to cover, which is... If you are boosting, make sure to take time, understand your job, understand your role, understand how it plays. And you have a way better time in the end game when you join your friends. The second thing I would like to talk about when it comes to boosting is really about, you know, as a content creator, and I see this all the time in, in the comments, in, in live chat, I think it's important to give people the liberty and space to pursue however they want to play this game. And, you know, I spend some time lurking on other content creators chat and Twitch chat as well and just see how they play out. Sometimes I do see like people trying to, you know, exert their opinion that you must do the MSQs, you know, boosting is wrong and that's not the right way to enjoy this game. Again, as someone who has done the MSQs, I totally understand where this is coming from. The way I always perceive it is, honestly, the Final Fantasy XIV community is very passionate about the MSQs and storyline. No surprises there because it's so well written and well executed. So whenever I see comments like where they're trying to steer people to do the MSQs instead of boosting, I can empathize with where they're coming from. But I think it's also more important to respect you know, other people's opinions in terms of how they want to enjoy the game. You know, I have friends that I'm currently playing with that they clearly they don't care as much about the MSQs, but they really, really, really enjoy the raiding and endgame environment. You know, they like the visual spectacles, they like how the musical tracks are executed for the fights, the transitions, and who's to say that you know they're wrong for enjoying the game in that manner. The key word here though is enjoying the game. Boosting only really becomes a hot topic for people when you know content creators or players actually turn around and complain about the game after they're boosted to say this game is no fun. And in a large part, I think the reason why they say that is because they find it hard to get into the game because they're losing out on so much context around the world, the characters, and that kind of detracts like a sense of purpose from playing the game. Like in my mind, I'm very clear that my identity is the warrior of light and I understand what the identity serves. And whenever you go through, you know, the raids and you go through the endgame content, you understand like, okay, this is how I fit into the broader part of the Final Fantasy XIV uh, lore and, and world. So with that said, it's a very good tangent here to talk about as well. I've also seen players where they boost and they go back and do New Game Plus, basically taking the time to understand the lore at their own leisurely pace, or they can also take the time to just watch other people's playthrough of the MSQs. And I've seen a few friends do it. Actually, they basically play the video uh, on the side uh, in a browser while they, they go through their daily stuff in the game just for them to catch up on the story. So that can actually be a very good middle ground if you are a new player that is very anxious to start playing with your friends in Endgame, but at the same time, you also want to take the time to understand you know, the lore and the broader story of Final Fantasy XIV. That could be a viable option as well. Play the new game plus or watch another person playing a playthrough of the game and understand the characters, understand the lore. And so that basically sums up my thoughts about you know boosting. I know it's a very hot topic. I get it all the time in my chat. So I figured I just put out a video, especially for those who kind of follow me from World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy, you know, I think this is a question I get very often. So hopefully you didn't get to use your pitchforks. Your pitchforks are all safe. You didn't get to bring it out and, you know, uh, start a crusade against me. <laughs> all jokes aside though, I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.